Stanford scientists find that we do not age in linear rates. There are two clusters in which transcriptomics and proteomics and changes in gene expression vary dramatically throughout our lifespan. One cluster occurs at 44, the other cluster occurs at 60. In today's show, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and specifically hone in on key aspects of metabolism and whole body physiology that the investigators found change pronouncedly around age 44 and 60. I think this is a really interesting study. Stanford University uh, scientists, investigators followed 108 people for several years. The longest time point where they followed uh, one person or several people was about seven years, but on average it was about 1.7 years. Uh, the individuals were tracked and the study looked at transcriptomics, that is the uh, byproducts of gene expression. They looked at various proteomics or protein changes within the body. They also looked at blood biomarkers that are common in blood tests that we talk about, like in the Bloodwork Masterclass and our free cheat sheet over at highintensityhealth.com, uh, like glucose, blood urea nitrogen, changes in kidney function, which I'll just share with you right now, really actually starts to decline after age 60. So I think that's really important. We know the kidneys uh, are really a, a integral organ for whole body health and longevity. And if we don't have healthy kidneys because our cardiovascular system is compromised, it's hard to be optimally healthy. Uh, but most importantly, on a practical level, these investigators found, I think, three areas that are noteworthy. And well, maybe four, we'll talk about the first three. So changes in carbohydrate metabolism around age 44. This is really important, and we're going to talk about the significance of this soon. Changes in caffeine metabolism. So that was uh, pronounced, uh, you know, there's a significant uh, signal in the, in the data that suggests that our body's ability to metabolize and clear caffeine changes in our mid-40s, suggesting that we should be a little bit more mindful about when we have caffeine, particularly consuming less caffeine after about noon. And if you're really caffeine sensitive, just relegating that to the uh, morning time. Just anecdotally, I have really cut back on my caffeine consumption. Um, I do one espresso in the morning with some whole raw milk. And then later in the day, I'll have some green tea or yerba mate, which I've been having mate since 2002. But I just find that the uh, caffeine-like products in the mate has uh, less of a negative impact on my sleep and sleep quality and, and duration. Um, the third thing that I wanted to really mention here is alcohol metabolism. And it turns out that enzymes and metabolic pathways involved in alcohol metabolism change pretty pronouncedly uh, in our 40s as well as in our 60s. And then at around age 60, there are significant changes in free radical pathology that implicate increased risk for cardiovascular disease, which we're going to get into. But first, friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying this content from this recently published study. It was published on the 14th of August this year. And I want to thank today's show sponsor, the good folks over at bondcharge.com. As you know, we've talked a lot about their products because I personally use them. I love the company and their values and the quality and the intention that goes into manufacturing some of their products. And one of the products that I've been using for a very, very, very long time, I bought these blue light filtering glasses from them back in 2017. And I have several pairs. I keep one uh, actually right by my computer, one uh, in my office, and actually one in my car as well. So when I travel, if I'm going on airplanes where there's going to be artificial light that can compromise your body's very intricate circuiting clock system, because this is really important for us to recognize artificial light at night compromises a key hormone release from your brain known as melatonin. Many of you are familiar with this. This is the hormone that helps to create sleep pressure and foster deep restorative sleep, but artificial light can suppress melatonin release. Now, it's great to just be off your screens at night, but if you have to be on your screens or you have to travel, you have to go pick up your relatives at the airport for the holiday season, whatever it may be, it's good to invest in a pair of blue light filtering glasses. They really do make a difference. Uh, you can look at just simple things like your eye strain. If you use uh, screens during the day, whether it's your cell phone or a computer, and if you wear these glasses compared to days that you don't, you will have significantly less eye strain and improvements in your sleep quality and circadian clock system. Because as you get older, the amplitude of your circadian clock system gets muted. And so you need to be even more mindful about avoiding artificial light at night and getting good sunlight and daylight during the day. So I would strongly suggest that you invest in a high quality pair of blue light filtering glasses. The folks over at Bond Charge make some of the best on the market. They've been doing this for a lot of years. You can save by going to bondcharge.com forward slash H-I-H or click the link in the description below. 
just so you know, the frames that I like are the Hudson and the Denver. And that's just me personally. There's a bunch of great frames, but I've found I've bought these repeatedly. And by the way, when you're there, definitely get one of their sleep masks. They're amazing. I travel with it. I go camping with it. It's awesome. Okay. So going back to the study, really interesting things. As I mentioned, the investigators found at age 44 and 60, there are significant changes. As you can see from this graphical abstract, we're looking at figure four here, part D in proteomics, lipidomics, the gut microbiome, metabolomics, cytokines. Now, this is important that we've known for a long time that as you get older, your baseline level of inflammation increases. It's known as inflammaging. This actually happens. Now, we also see a parallel increase in the susceptibility to developing type 2 diabetes because our metabolic machinery that are responsible for healthfully uh, metabolizing glucose actually get compromised as we get older. So we need to be much more mindful about exercise and selecting foods and participating in lifestyle behaviors that decrease chronic inflammation, such as moving throughout the day, such as not eating processed junk food, not having corn-derived sugars or sweeteners, not having a lot of highly oxidizable industrial seed oils or vegetable oils. We have other videos on those specific topics if you're interested. But you know, you can get away with a lot of things in your 20s and 30s, but the rubber meets the road in your 40s and 60s because things start to change. And so we don't age linearly. I think that's the most important thing here. Some limitations from the study is they weren't able to totally ascertain what lifestyle factors can sort of delay the onset of these metabolomic and proteomic and transcriptomic changes. So we don't really know exactly at this point, but it turns out that there is a significant signal around age 44 and 60. So one of many take-home messages from this study, in my opinion, is if you haven't yet cleaned up your diet and lifestyle by 44, uh, now's the time to get to it. You got to put some pep in the step and really start to uh, not consume the processed foods. Um, if you're not getting at least 9,000 steps per day, you got to just start doing that. And multiple studies now show that these exercise snacks and just movement throughout the day is key for balancing blood sugar which as this study found, our blood sugar metabolic processes become compromised as we get older. We should be more mindful about our alcohol and caffeine consumption as we get older. And we should also make significant improvements with regards to our cardiovascular risk and our health uh, around age 60, because that's when the free radical stressors and things start to really increase. And, um, I'm not really sure what the best way to mitigate that would be outside of lifestyle change, health, health promoting sleep, uh, as well as possibly supplementing with things that might help support glutathione production, such as N-acetylcysteine, glycine. Uh, there was some pretty good evidence in 2023 about berberine hydrochloride as a tool that can help support and promote metabolic and cardiovascular health. So those are just some of the things that come to mind based upon the data. But I think it's important that the investigators say there is a nonlinear decline in kidney function and an increased risk of type 2 diabetes with age with a critical threshold occurring at approximately age 60. They also found that clinically relevant laboratory tests such as plasma glucose increases with age as well as blood urea nitrogen, suggesting again that kidney function is particularly important. Now, you might be wondering, well, what do you do for your kidneys? Well, your kidneys are a network of small micro vessels. And so we know that individuals that have micro vessel damage, i.e. from insulin resistance or diabetes are particularly vulnerable to having augmented kidney function and kidney challenges. So one of the best things that you can do for the health of your kidneys is support the health of your metabolism and support healthy glucose metabolism, taking a walk after a meal not over consuming total energy throughout the day, and also being mindful about how much carbohydrates you're ingesting in proportion to the amount of exercise or activities that you do. If you don't exercise much, if you sit around and you're on a computer and you order most of your um, food and groceries from Uber Eats or uh, Amazon.com and you don't really leave your house, you probably don't need 300 grams of carbohydrates per day. That's just common sense, right? You might want to prioritize more protein, um, some low glycemic index carbohydrates from tubers or root vegetables, uh, sprouted rice, things like that, maybe some fruit and vegetables. But I think it, 
really, we need to be more mindful about the ratio of our carbohydrate intake versus our exercise. Now, in contrast, if you're training for a marathon, if you do CrossFit five days a week, if you're in construction, you have a blue collar job, you're very active or you're on your feet all the time, then of course you have more affordability or uh, more buffer room to ingest more carbohydrates. So I think in my opinion, that is the biggest takeaway here is that we age non-linearly and significant changes occur with regards to carbohydrate, caffeine, alcohol, uh, metabolism. So if you haven't yet cut back on alcohol and you're in your 40s, now's the time, my friends. Um, it affects your sleep in a negative way. It makes you age faster. I will tell you that your brain will work much better if you consume less alcohol. That's unequivocal. Many people report that. And the other thing to consider is as you get older, your kidney function declines. And that is really important for the health of your entire body. So if you don't have good cardiovascular health, it's hard to have good kidney health. And if you don't have good kidney health, it's hard to have good whole body health. So it comes back to the basics with glu healthy glucose metabolism, exercise, your kidney rhythm health, and healthy whole foods. Uh, the other thing that I'm looking at here is this, uh, the set of different clusters with regards to common laboratory tests. And you can see the glucose increases along with blood urea nitrogen. So something to consider, be mindful. This is why I recommend getting blood work once a year so you can look at these different biomarkers. If you're confused about which tests to order, we recommend basic tests that are found at every major commercial blood assessment, laboratory assessment company out there like LabCorp or Quest. Any major hospital can do these tests that we offer that we recommend that you uh, run and assess every single year over at highintensityhealth.com. You can't miss it. It's a banner right there. I'll put the link in the description below so you can download that cheat sheet, print out page one, go to your doctor, say, hey, look, th these are the tests that I want to run every single year. You might get a little pushback depending upon you know, what contracts they have with the laboratory companies they use. But believe me, these are all affordable. The cash pay for this is less than $200. But there's a lot of good uh, data there that you can start to look and track over time. So what do you think about this study? What do you think about the recommendations and the images? I would love to know in the comment section below. As always, I'm grateful that you tuned in to the very end. Hopefully you got some value. Thanks for your comments, your shares, and we will catch you on a future show down the road.